What's up, guys? Today we're going to be playing What's up, guys? Wait, who the hell are you? I'm Kujo. No, 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 no. I think you'll find I'm Kujo. 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 And so is my wife. We're all Kujo. There can be only one. Hi guys, welcome back to part 3. As I mentioned in the last video, we'll be painting the face today. Now, I wanted quite a pallid complexion, so I started off by mixing up some Fantasy and Games Resurrection Flesh with some Scale Colour Caspian Blue, and I added a bit of Games Workshop Lauren Forest. It gives you quite a murky, desaturated colour. It looks quite dark on the palette, but once it's on the model, you see it's actually not as dark as it seems. For our first highlight, we'll mix a bit of white into our base colour. Notice I mix this off to the side. That lets me retain the original base colour in case I need to go back later and clean up any layers that go a bit pear-shaped. So here I'm just trying to pick out all the most prominent details of the face. The eyebrows, the tops of the cheekbones, the chin, the nose, etc. We'll also do the upper part of the forehead towards the hairline. Add a little more white and highlight again, this time trying to hit a smaller surface area. For the details close to the eyes, try and pull the highlights towards the eyes. This will help to draw attention to the middle of the face. With the exception being the nose, you want to draw the highlight away from the eyes to the tip of the nose.
also don't forget to do the ears. For our first shade colour we'll add some more Caspian Blue into the base and we'll thin this down with some water to a glaze consistency. With a small amount on the brush, glaze into the recesses. Now this face is very finely sculpted so there's quite a lot of lumps and bumps where you can target areas with your glaze. We're going to be glazing over this later with another colour which will radically change the look so you can think of this more of a, a pre-shade than anything. Notice here that under the cheekbones I'm drawing the glaze upwards so that it's darkest just underneath the cheek. Now we'll switch to Vallejo Armour Brown and we'll use this to pick out some of the details towards the centre of the face. So we're painting these creases around the mouth. The little crow's feet wrinkles at the side of the eyes. and the eye socket itself. Add a little more white to your base colour and we'll try to intensify some of the highlights. This one on the lower eyelid is really tricky to hit just because it's so tiny but if you can do it it's worth a hassle as it really helps to define the eyes. Just use white for the eyeballs. I'll block in the hair with black so you can better see the face. Now the mouth was painted by filling in the, the whole area with armour brown and then I added a bit of red to the brown for the tongue and I picked out the teeth with some talam sand mixed with a bit of white. You can see it looks quite nice already but we'll add a bit of OSL just to finish it off. To do that we'll start off by blocking in those little holes on his neck piece with white. Now we'll take some sunset purple and we'll mix it with a bit of lamium medium so that it's like a wash consistency. Then simply put that into the holes. Mm -hmm. 
Now once it dries it should look something like this. You can see that the white is still quite bright but it has a bit of a purple tint to it. If it didn't dry correctly and it ends up too purple you can simply dot the centre with a bit of white to bring the brightness back. Using that same purple we mix with the medium will glaze down over the left side of the face. Focus on the lower side of all the little lumps and bumps. The effect you're going for is that the purple light is shining up onto the face from the light source at the neck so you want to avoid hitting the upper side of the cheeks as the light wouldn't really be hitting those parts. You can see that I've also glazed over the gold armour close to the light source. That really helps to give you that glow effect. It's quite a subtle effect but it does look pretty cool and it's actually not that difficult to achieve so it's well worth giving it a go. Alright guys, so that's all for me. Check back later for part 4 where we'll be doing the cloak. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and I'll see you all next time. Thanks again. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.